Okay, I don't know if anybody is watching this publicly, but if you're watching, welcome to our Twitter presentation. I'm going to show you um, some ways to be more effective in terms of engaging people on Twitter and get results. Um, please open a new window and copy and paste this or type this um, link that I'm giving you so that you can get access to my slides because resolution on Hangout is not really good and it has a little bit of delay so if you could open this slide share presentation and follow along I will tell you uh, when I'm switching slides so you can follow the presentation okay so I'm going to few, give you a few minutes to do that okay let's see hello this is me I'm going to switch to the um, Slides now. Okay, I hope you can see this. I'm going to make it full screen so it is more visible. Okay, so this social media hangout is sponsored by my company, Captive Touch. I'm Sherry Nureini, founder and president of basically Captive Touch, and we're going to learn about how to be effective on Twitter. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, this is what I've already mentioned. Okay, what is Captive Touch? We, um, this is my company where we offer social media education, management, and coaching, uh, which is represented by these symbols. Um, and also we offer e-newsletter marketing services and blogging services. Okay, so let's get into the presentation. Now, this galaxy represents all the billions of tweets that have been posted or are daily posted on Twitter. Um, and that little arrow is pointing to individual posts that you and I generate on Twitter. Now, looking at this picture, you can see that it is so difficult to be found on this universe of um, individual tweets. How can you be effective? How can you reach your target audience effectively? when your individual tweets can be lost. Okay, so we're going to get into that because a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of people start um, Twitter accounts and then they start posting their stuff. They don't get any response. They get discouraged. So it's important to learn how to be effective. And it is possible to be effective. Okay, I'm changing slides. Um, I'm changing slides from the universe that I showed now to a slide where it says start your profile so with your profile and it's important that you completely complete your profile because you don't want somebody to come to your profile and really not knowing who you are, what you offer, whether you share common interests with them or not. So you got to tell people who you are and be transparent. Um, when you type the description of your bio, uh, be sure to use keywords because people are constantly searching for people like you, which you, they might want to connect with you. So those keywords are going to be helpful for them to find your profile. Also be sure to uh, include a link either to your website or your Facebook page or about me page or whatever you want, as long as it allows people more information um, as to who you are and what you offer and it also generates more trust. Okay, we're going to go to the next slide. Um, 
it's going to freshen up now. Hopefully you have switched to the next slide. This is my profile. Um, that's, this is my picture on the top and then my name. Um, and you can see that I also have a description of who I am, president of Captive Touch, founder of Social Media Clinic. These are workshops that I offer. And we offer <coughs> social media, excuse me, <coughs> education, management, and strategy. I'm also a uh, biology instructor at a community college. I like to connect with uh, other educators. Um, that's another aspect of what I'm doing. So I'm including that in my bio. So if people in my field, education, college education field, are looking for me, they can find me. Now, back to how to being effective on Twitter, I want to point you to some really nice feature that um, Twitter offers us, which is called lists. And I have pointed to it um, with an arrow. Um, what is a list? When you start accumulating your followers, you have so many people you have to follow, and um, that screen of your, the stream is refreshing so rapidly that it is really hard to keep up with what everybody is saying. And you want to make sure when you follow people, um, you want to be able to connect with them and read their uh, updates. So in order to organize uh, your activity, you can create lists based on topics that you choose, and then you can um, manage your, the people that you follow that way. Uh, I'm going to show you what it means in the next screen. So if you click on that list, I'm changing screens. You will go to a screenshot of my lists page. Okay? So on the top, there are two options in the list. One is the subscribed to, uh, which means this is a list of lists that you have created. So for example, I have lists for tools, chat, education, Eximir, these are people that I network with through the Eximir social network, internet security, a group on Triber. Um, I am joining, so these are people that have been segmented into lists, so I make sure that um, I want, if I want to keep up with people on, on my Triber group, I click on this and see all of their updates etc cetera, etc cetera. but the thing is another great thing about lists is that when somebody else creates a list you can subscribe to it so you can take advantage of the hard work somebody else has done and um, get access to tweets from people that are you are interested in you can also if you are really active and if you're providing value and people think they want to follow you they put you in a list and the other tab that I'm not showing I'm just showing it with an arrow, uh, are the lists that you belong to. And uh, you want to strive to be listable. That's important. OK? So now we know what lists look like. I'm going to change to the next screen. OK. So why are lists so powerful? Because. They, as I said, they allow you to organize your stream. They help you prioritize your interactions. Let's say you want to make sure that there's a group of people that you don't want to miss their tweets um, so you can follow that list specifically if you don't have a lot of time to keep up with everybody. Lists are also a great way to find your target audience. Uh, for example, those target audience could be like-minded people for networking or your target customers. And remember, we said that you can also always take advantage of the fact that people are already creating lists. So the part of the hard work is done for you. So why not take advantage of it? So how do you find lists to find people? which brings us to the next slide, so I'm changing slides. And the title of the slide is Using Lists to Find Your Target Audience. And there are at least two ways. There is a service called Listerious that it's a 
basically depository for people to go and list their lists. So, for example, I could go to Listerius and uh, list my lists. For example, my um, Examir list. I said put the name, give it a name, and then give it a description, and then submit it to this website. So, if other people who are interested in people uh, uh, that are part of this social network, they can come to Listeria, search for it, and find the list and follow the people that are on the list. Now, it's important to know that you uh, search for keywords so when people write it, it the part of the um, listing where the description appears is important, those keywords that people put in there. Another way of discovering lists is using the a really nice tool provided by Twitter itself calls uh, it is called pound discover which is a way I prefer and I show you how um, so let's see how um, we can use these resources I'm switching slide okay so this screen shows uh, the title is sample search on Listerius and let's say you are in an industry where you're interested in long-term care and you use the search long-term care so this is the search box that you type in long-term care and click search I've already done that and then a you see that I have some lists that it has pulled out it says who it is curated by and here's a description so it says curated by catalyst the top one and then it says how many people are on there and then he, here are the chat keywords that were used to create the profile for this list and here's long-term care okay so if you wanted to you can click on this thing and then go discover the list and the 358 people on it or another way to do it is through the um, pound category I'm switching slides now and I'm going to a screen where it says sample search on Twitter search term long-term care now one reason that I prefer the Twitter um, tool better is that Listerius really depends on people actually listing their lists um, and it all whether you find something or not depends on what kind of keywords they use in the description and the tags that they use the good thing about the tool provided by Twitter is that first of all you can search based on a particular topic that you're interested in um, if you don't know what hashtags are this is the pound sign and what people do on Twitter which is a great way of segmenting the conversations is that for example if there's a group of people on Twitter that are interested in talking about uh, interested in long-term care and they talk about long-term care they, they include a um, pound which is called a hashtag and this term long-term care they embed it anywhere in their tweets and Twitter classifies those uh, posts so you can search for that so let's say we're on Twitter and we're interested in conversations about people that converse about long-term care because those are people that we're interested in connecting with so you put the search term pound long-term care into this window and um, click return and then so you click discover click here and then type and click and then here's a um, real-time tweets that comes up where people use this term long-term care okay so this is wonderful it's um, because it gives you real-time results and these are conversations that are um, actually happening and it shows you active Twitter accounts because there's a lot of uh, Twitter accounts that are really not active um, so we see a number of Twitter users that are posting about long-term care and, and I kind of um, chose this one it's called we know a place Inc it's a company um, and let's choose this one and click on it and see what we see so I'm going to change the screen now <clears throat> and we're gonna 
the screen that you're going to see is the list of lists that this company has created. So the title is Lists Created and Subscribed to by at We Know a Place. All right? So there are a few public figures, hospitals, home care companies, and so on and so forth are created by this company. But look, there's also a list that they have subscribed to. Um, and this list is created by AARP Home and Family. And there's 155 members on it. Now, this is a great list because it's not, not only it's real time, it uh, identifies active accounts, and it also focuses on the conversations that you are interested in if you're interested in long-term care. Okay? So let's check this out. I'm changing screen now. Okay. So you click on that list, and then... You will see people at caregiving's list. Let's find one. And there are companies in here that are tweeting, and then we found the real person. It's always nice to connect with real people. So let's, let's follow her. She is part of this list. Um, and then um, we know that she's been curated in this list because of, listed in this list because of, the topic she's talking about, and let's connect with her. So I'm going to go to the next screen. The title of the slide is How to Add People to Lists. And it, on the left, it shows the profile of this lady called Dennis Brown. Um, so you want to know, here's her profile. She helps family caregivers. She's founder of caregiving.com. That's fantastic. That's right in the field. So, how, so what do you do? You follow her, and then if you want to list her, you click on this figurehead. Click it, and this window opens, and then you click on Add or Remove from Lists. Okay? So you, this one opens. This is a list of my lists. Um, you either choose one of your lists by clicking one of these, checking one of these boxes, or if you want to create a new list, you right click on create a list, give it a name, and add her to it. That's simple as that. Okay? So I'm changing screens. So if you talk to 10 people, they probably give you all sorts of different ways of finding people on Twitter. So I'm just going to go over it to be a little bit comprehensive. Um, the search function on Twitter is called search.twitter.com. It's very powerful because it gives you, because especially the advanced feature of it, because it allows you to look for people based on location, based on the sentiment of the tweets that they have, and all sorts of different um, ways that you can search for keywords. Um, a Twello is a Twitter yellow pages where people, it's basically um, people that have Twitter accounts go and create accounts for themselves. And Twello divides people based on um, industry. So you can go there and look for people. Uh, Bing also, Bing Social, uh, it's, it's a very powerful way of uh, searching Facebook and Twitter for, um, for your keywords and finding people there. But as I said, uh, Twitter's at uh, hashtag discover, pound discover search is my favorite way to go. It's more efficient, more relevant, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to change screens now. So um, you find people and you list them and you start talking to them. But is that the only way to find like-minded people? No. Um, Another very powerful way are Twitter chats, which I call it the golden nugget of engagement. Um, Twitter chats basically is a group of people having a conversation, a chat on Twitter, which is usually centered around the topic. Um, so you can guess that people that participate in a chat are pretty, um, they should be connected because they're interested in the same thing. It's great for networking, for finding customers, for finding guest blog posts, um, joint ventures, and things like that. 
So basically your mission should be to find a chat that is relevant to your topic. A chat has already been established or to start one yourself. Um, this is, you probably want to start a chat once you really establish and you know um, quite a lot of people on Twitter. Um, it's quite a lot of work to start a chat and have maintain it and having it be sustainable. So I'm going to change screens. So where to find a list of chats? There is a really nice wiki that has been put together that classifies Twitter chats based on day of the week. Um, you can um, search them by alphabetical characters or topics and things like that. It's a really nice list. Uh, but what you want to be aware is that not all chats are created equal. Some of them have died out. Some of them aren't really good. Um, so there was recently I found a really nice blog post where someone crowdsourced um, chats that are on Twitter um, and she um, invited people to list their favorite Twitter chats and she listed them and then asked them to vote for it. So if you go follow this link that I'm showing you, you can find that article and take a look at the top 10 or 20 Twitter chats that are out there and see if your topic of interest is any of them. Okay, I'm going to switch slides. Okay, so you can participate in chats, but what do you say when you're not participating in a chat? I mean, chats aren't going on all the time and you have to be posting updates. So the, here are some other ways that I recommend. You can join webinars that are related to your industry. That's a fantastic way of meeting people. I've met so many wonderful people this way. Um, it's a potent weapon of networking. So find a webinar you're interested in and then when you're listening to the webinar, post updates of what you hear in the webinar. Um, usually people that host webinars have a hashtag. Use that to segment um, your conversations so people know that you are participating and it's a fabulous way of meeting people. Um, if you are a business owner or you want to get be known or establish yourself as an authority in your field, you should have a blog so you're going to be sharing links to your blog posts. Uh, you're going to be sharing links to articles that you find that you have read and you find valuable for your um, audience. Don't just feed an RRS into your stream. I don't think that's a good idea, although many people do that. Um, and also read updates from people that, sh that are on your list and people that you follow. Uh, if you find them valuable, retweet them. And um, if you can, include a comment with the RT. I know that's not possible in the Twitter um, a web application, a web interface, but there are um, tools that where you can do that and I'm going to show you at the end of this presentation what to, those tools are. So include a comment so people know why they should be reading it. Sometimes the titles um, aren't really clear or it help people have their information read. People appreciate that. And also, uh, it's important to know that you need to start conversations with people. When somebody follows you or you follow somebody, try to go to their profile and see uh, what they have posted and find something to talk about. Uh, it's like going to a networking group. Um, for example, if you follow somebody and you look at their um, updates and you see they've been to a football game and if you are a fan of football, you say, oh, start a conversation, how did you like that game, and so on and so forth, and you start a conversation and it can go to amazing places. Also, and when you look at your profile, pay attention to your at connect stream because that's where Twitter tells you whether somebody has followed you or retweeted your stuff or favorited your tweet. It's really important to keep an eye on that. Don't ignore it. I'm going to change screens. Okay, so this is a screenshot of my at Connect stream. The title of this slide is Keep an Eye on Your Interaction Stream. Um, you see that there are some people that have followed me, somebody's talking to me, um, five different people 
retweet it, something I said, so you make sure you write to these people and thank them for retweeting your material. Um, go through these profiles and see if you like to follow them and uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a very important tab in your uh, Twitter account. Don't ignore it. Um, changing slides. <clears throat> The title of the slide is Some Twitter Do's and Don'ts, okay? So let's go through the don'ts, and I don't know why it starts at 2. My numbering has been messed up. Anyway, so don't direct message people thanking them for following you. This is very common. People do that a lot, and it's annoying. Personally, I don't like it, and I know a lot of people that don't like it. So. Um, if you really want to talk to somebody, you want to thank them for following you, talk to them publicly and find, start a conversation. Don't just thank people. Okay? And if you don't want to start a conversation, don't, don't do it. <clears throat> don't talk, constantly talk about yourself um, and what you're doing or if you're bored or, and always stay positive. So limit the amount of time you spend talking about yourself. And be con uh, don't be inconsistent. You um, want to make sure that you are on Twitter constantly and, um, and be present all the time. You know how they say 80% of success is showing up, so you have to show up to Twitter every day. It takes work. Do be yourself and speak in first person. None of that we are happy or we are whatever. Um, unless you're working for a big company, but even if you talk about, if you are working for a company and there are multiple Twitter um, people that manage your Twitter account, you can talk about we are doing this or we are doing that, but sign your update with your name so people know that you're connecting with a real person. If people share your posts, thank them. And uh, don't be hesitate to be generous. Um, recommend people if they make an impression on you. Okay, being generous is a huge part of success in uh, Twitter and any social media tool. So I'm going to change slides. So I'm going to play a game here, and there are various um, posts, the sample posts that I have, and we're going to assign them into two groups, either who cares or interesting, I want to know. And most of your tweets, posts, you want to be, I mean, all of them, you want it to be in this category, okay? So let's look at some samples. I'm changing slides. So this is sample post number one. I see that a lot, and people who use, uh, Foursquare uses a lot, I know that it's a fun game to do and stuff, but think about how much that extra cup of coffee you're going to get from Starbucks, how much is it worth it to you? Is it worth it constantly annoying people that are following you by telling them where you are? Uh, so do you care if somebody is at Starbucks? No, who cares? So limit that. Next sample post. Sample post number two. I see that a lot of mostly, you know, startup companies, technology companies do that a lot. Our CEO is going to be at the whatever conference. Be sure to meet him. I mean, who cares? So he is there. You know, you, this is an example of talking about yourself, and broadcasting, and things like that. Don't do it. Um, next slide. Sample post three. Ooh, my hands are in pain, a good pain from signing a hundred copies of my book. So this is a little trick here. It sounds like you're talking about yourself, but it's sort of you're telling people who you are. Uh, you're telling people you've been somewhere, and it's sort of um, in a way of letting people know that the book that you've written is popular. So that in generates curiosity. People are going to be curious, I wonder what that book is. So that's a little tricky, but you're allowed to do this once in a while as long as you don't do it too often. Next slide. Sample post number four. So if you are familiar with clout, 
people go to class all the time and give other people plus K so their class score increases or whatever. And you see that a lot. And it, to be quite honest, it's really boring. Um, so it sounds like I gave Jane Doe plus K for blogging on cloud and then there's a link. Okay? Who cares? Right? Give me a reason. Like, sure, you give a plus K. Everybody knows that people are engaged in plus K exchanges, making them more meaningful. And how can you make that more meaningful? Um, to generate curiosity, I'm going to the next slide. Sample post number five. I gave at Jane Doe plus K for blogging. She helps my blog rank first page on Google. Now, who wouldn't want to do that? So if somebody who's reading your updates and are looking for somebody, help them with SEO, they're going to click through the link that comes out of it and maybe contact them. And that actually happened. I gave a plus K to one of my connections on Facebook. He's in video blogging. And um, I said I gave whoever plus K for media. If you're looking to create uh, professional videos, he's your man. And there was the link and five or six different people linked on it, um, clicked on it. So it's important to make things, give things more context and tell people why you're doing things. Give your post updates meaning. Don't be boring. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? So next slide. Tool recommendations. There's lots of tools out there. I'm just going to mentioned two, but there are many other ones that are fantastic. Um, one is Hootsuite that I use for management of my, so you can manage your different streams. So you saw that Twitter um, web interface, there are various different tabs that are on your screen and you want to be able to manage them all, looking at them all at once. And there's lots of different things that Hootsuite does. Uh, also, it gives you analytics. It's important for you to know when you post a link, it's important to know whether people have engaged with your post, whether they have clicked through it. If you don't do that, you're wasting a lot of energy. Um, it's important to know which one of your post people are more engaged with, are more interesting, so you can do more of it. It's important to know what time to post and things like that, uh, which brings me to the fantastic tool Crowd Booster. Both of these tools come with three options. Um, Crowd Booster tells you best, best, what is the best time to tweet. It shows you how effective your posts are in terms of gives you a graphic interface showing you uh, the amount of your reach, how many times your posts have been retweeted, and it also tells you who has retweeted you most, um, who you should be following, who's influenced. It's, these are great tools. I uh, recommend them. There's another one that I haven't listed here called Buffer App, um, and that's a fantastic tool as well. Okay, I'm going to change screens. Okay, so I don't know if there's anybody watching this or not, but if you liked what you saw, click the plus one button and share the post. Um, if you have suggestions or want to be notified of my future presentations, um, I'm going to post a link that is to a survey that I have created. I can also show you on the screen later on um, so I can know what you want to cover, whether you want to um, be a guest on my weekly. I'm going to have weekly Google Hangouts um, and what you want to hear about. Okay? Next slide. Last words, be human, be generous, be thoughtful, be consistent. Don't forget to have a conversation. Don't just post links. And be sure to measure. It's important to measure your success. And the um, tools to measure and how to do it is beyond the scope of this uh, webinar, so of this hangout. So we're going to cover it some other day. I'm going to go to the next slide. Thanks for listening. Please complete my feedback survey to, so I know how I did. Let me know if you want to 
um, partner with me so we can present your skills uh, if you're in, if you're interested in teaching your skills through Hangouts, let me know. We'll work together. And I thank you for listening. I'm going to leave this up so you can hopefully copy and paste it or write it down or something. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.